Dear participants of uh, MBA program, we have already learned what is demand and supply and how they interact with each other to form a market. In this lecture, we are going to learn different elasticity concept which is closely related to this demand and supply. When we learned law of demand, we saw that when price of a product increases, quantity demanded of the same product decreases. Now, this is a qualitative statement or we just said which direction is moving, what is moving in which direction. So, price and quantity demanded they are moving in opposite direction, this is what we have learned. But we could not or we did not specifically tell you that when price of any product increases by a certain amount, what percentage of change takes place in the quantity demanded. In other words, for example, if we increase the price by say 5 percent, what percentage change will take place in the demand? Will it change by again 5 percent or less than 5 percent or more than 5 percent? This is can be, this can be learned with the concept of elasticity or price elasticity of demand. We normally use a simple mathematical formula to derive this elasticity of demand or price elasticity of demand. If you look at this formula, it shows that price elasticity of demand is equal to percentage change in quantity demanded divided by percentage change in price. In other words, percentage change in price goes to the numerator and in the denominator we have percentage change in price. This ratio of percentage change in quantity demanded and percentage change in price is going to tell us the price elasticity of demand. The word elasticity here means responsiveness or to what extent consumers react or respond to the changes in price. Now, depending on the different values of these price elasticity of demand, we can, we can divide a product or different products into different categories. If price elasticity of demand is more than 1, but remember when we say more than 1, it is the absolute value of price elasticity of demand because price elasticity of demand is always negative. Remember price elasticity of demand is always negative because the reason is very simple because of the negative or inverse relationship between quantity which is in the numerator and the price which is in the denominator. So, one of them is always negative as a result we will have the value which is price elasticity of demand negative. So, ignoring this minus sign of the result we then say that if the absolute value of price elasticity of demand is more than 1, then the good or service is price elastic. In other words, consumers will react to even small changes of price of that product to a very high uh, extent or very high level. So, they are very much uh, sensitive to changes of the prices of these products. Again, if the price elasticity of demand becomes less than 1, again ignoring the minus sign or the absolute value of price elasticity of demand is less than 1, then we say that that specific product, good or service is price inelastic. As an example of price inelastic good, we say that uh, salt for example. Even if the price of salt increases by 50 percent, say from previous price to the new price it has increased by 50 percent, people will definitely demand less salt than before, but this decrease in demand for salt will be very small. In other words, this product or salt is demand inelastic or price inelastic. So, we see that when price elasticity of demand is more than 1, then it is price elastic say perfume or fragrance normally we wear or designer shirts, designer clothes, these are all price elastic product 
and then price inast inelastic products are those products demand for which are normally inelastic. In other words, even if the price of those products changes, people do not respond to these changes so frequently or so largely. Now, in between these two cases, there is a case where price elasticity of demand is exactly one, which is unitary elasticity. Now, that is a theoretical possibility, but in reality, very few products fall into this category. Apart from this price elasticity of demand, we also have other elasticities. But before that, there are some factors which affect this price elasticity of demand. One of these factors is available substitutes. So, if number of substitutes of a product is so many, say uh, you, you are going to buy soap. Now, if price of a certain soap, say Lux, increases, immediately you will look to, in the shop to other products, other soaps, whether you have some substitutes of that Lux. If you have many substitutes of Lux, then you are going to respond to these changes in the price of Lux very high. In other words, the more the number of substitute is, the more elastic is the product. Second factor is uh, time available. If price changes, price of any product changes and time available to a consumer is very short, then he or she is not in the position to change his or her decision. So, he or she is going to buy that product anyway. But in the long run, when the consumer has enough time to think about these changes in price, to compare with other products prices, then what she will do or what he will do, then he or she will respond to these changes in price. In other words, the product becomes elastic in the long run, but it remains inelastic in the short run. And the third factor, which is also important is expenditure share. We spend lot our money on different goods. For example, we buy this pen. Now, a very small part of my total income is spent when I buy this pen. So, even if the price of this pen increases or decreases, I am not bothered. So, I am not going to respond to these changes in price. On the other hand, suppose uh, a furniture which is very expensive as compared to as compared to this pen. Now, if price of that furniture increases or decreases, I will be greatly affected by this change. And that is why what I am going to do, I will be very much concerned about these changes in price and then I will respond very highly. So, what we have learned is that the larger is the expenditure share on any product, the more elastic the product will be. Now, these are different factors which affect our elasticity, uh, price elasticity of demand. Apart from this price elasticity of demand, another concept is very important which is cross elasticity of demand. In cross elasticity of demand, we measure the changes in price of one good in, again, the changes in the prices of one good to the changes in quantity demanded of another good. Suppose, we have two goods X and Y. We are here concerned about the changes in quantity demanded of X because of changes in price of Y. This is the cross elasticity. Again, going back to our previous example of uh, two, two soaps, uh, Lux and Kea, these two soaps. Now, if price of Lux increases, how it is going to affect the quantity demanded of Kea? We can measure this cross elasticity of two products with a simple formula. Now, this formula is very simple as we said a mathematical formula. Price cross elasticity of demand is equal to percentage change in quantity demanded of x divided by percentage change in price of y. In case of our example, x is say Lux, so or Kea, whatever you take, it does not matter. The important thing is you compare two products. Now, once you take price of one product and quantity of another product and then you measure what is the relationship between them? 
Now, if the value becomes positive, in other words, if the cross elasticity of demand is more than 0, then we say that these two products are substitute of each other. It means that if price of one product increases, consumers will switch from that product to another product and hence the demand for the new product will increase. On the other hand, if the numerical value of cross elasticity of demand is negative or less than 0, then what happens? Then we say that these two products are not substitutes, rather they are complements of each other. Again, the, the example for this case is tea and sugar. Suppose if price of sugar increases, people will definitely buy less of sugar, but we are not concerned about whether people are buying less of sugar, rather we are more concerned about whether people are buying more or less tea. So, normally what happens in case of these two complementary products, tea and sugar, if price of sugar increases, people demand less tea than before because these two products are consumed together. This is another important thing we have learned, so cross elasticity of demand is very clear to us. Third elasticity concept is income elasticity of demand. In case of income elasticity of demand, we are particularly concerned about the relationship between the changes in income and how it is going to affect the quantity demanded of a product. Suppose normally we earn 10,000 taka per month and currently we are demanding 10 units of a product. The question is if our income increases from 10,000 taka per month to 15,000 taka per month, are we going to demand more of that product or less? Whatever it is, this relationship between changes in income on the one hand and changes in the quantity demanded on the other can be measured with the help of income elasticity of demand. Again, with a very much simple formula, we find this income elasticity of demand is equal to percentage change in quantity demanded for x divided by percentage change in income. Now, if the value, the numerical value of income elasticity of demand becomes positive, what it means? It means that if our income is increasing, then we are also buying that product more than before. Both our numerator and the denominator both in both places we have positive value. So, the result is positive or more than 0. If this is the case then we call that product a normal good. For example, milk. Now, if, we, if our income increases definitely we demand more milk than before holding other thing constant anyway or say literature or novel books. If our income increases and if our taste is the same for books, reading, if we are fond of reading books, then as our income increases, we will be demanding more good books. On the other hand, if the numerical value of income elasticity of demand becomes less than 0 or negative, in other words, one of these two either numerator or denominator becomes negative, then the value is going to be negative as well, value of income elasticity of demand. In this case, we will say that income elasticity of demand is negative and the product which we are considering is inferior. The word inferior in English language means of low quality, but in economics we are not meaning that inferior means something of low quality. The most important thing here is that people are buying a good less as they earn more. As a classical example, we can cite the name of margarine, which is close to butter. Look, butter is something more purer than margarine. As our income increases, we buy more butter. Now, butter is a normal good. On the other hand, normally when our income is very low, then we use margarine as a spread on, you know, toast, on loaf. 
But as our income increases, we buy less of our margarine and more of butter. So we are buying less margarine as our income increasing. This product is an example of inferior. Another, another uh, example of inferior good could be say generic product rather than specific brand specific. Most of us are uh, fond of wearing jeans. Now when we purchase specific brand of any gin that is closely related to income as our income increases we buy more brand branded gins. But generic gins without any brand when our income increases then what we do we buy less generic gins or those gins which do not have any brands. So these brandless gins are inferior goods. So we have learned so far three very important uh, elasticity concept. The first was price elasticity of demand or the own price elasticity of demand. The second one was cross elasticity of demand which measures the relationship between two goods whether they are substitutes or they are complements. And the third one was income elasticity of demand which, uh, which focuses on the relationship between income and demand for any good. Apart from this three elasticity you can on your own imagine of many other elasticities. For example, advertising elasticity of demand. What is this? You are pretty much concerned about the level of advertisement you are going to undertake. In your business organization, if you want to go for a massive advertisement campaign, it has to be justified by something. For example, it has to bring in more revenue or pe it has to be able to influence consumers so that they demand more of the same product. So you can calculate advertising elasticity of demand which will tell you what percentage change in the advertisement expenditure causes what percentage of changes in quantity demanded. Now if you find that a, a say a 1 percent change in advertisement expenditure brings in more revenue for you then it is justified. But in case if your advertisement is say incre uh, uh, has been increased by 1 percent but it has failed to bring in even 1 percent more revenue then your advertisement is not justified. That can be measured using a simple mathematical formula of advertising elasticity of demand. I hope that we have learned what is elasticity and now we are in the position to apply this concept to our real world business environment. Thank you very much.